Zeit. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by BlackRifleCoffee.com. Can you see it? Can you see this, James? I mean, Viacom Dios, brother. Identical. Amazing. Identical. Amazing, isn't it? Identical. Identical. Eh, identical. Identical. Like a not an octopus. Does that sound weird to you? Identical. Yeah. Yeah, like it's a tentacle. You're you're over pronouncing it. I, I feel. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You're definitely over pronouncing. I did. It. Yep. What really grinds your gears? We were watching some chick the other night on something, especially. Especially, uh, when one people say especially, that really probably, probably, yeah. Uh, I'll probably go. Do you say probably? I, I, I doubt it. It doesn't. Uh, someone, Jenna Bush, on Jay the Today, Bush. Today Show said, yeah. "Woof" instead of "wolf." Yeah, that's a that's Peter a weird and the one. Woof, she said. Yeah. That's a southern thing. I think you're taking the L out of there, you know? Yeah. Just, She's from Texas. One? Library. Library I mean, always like, gets you, especially. I, I say especially things. Especially is a. I'll mispronounce things as, as a joke. Like, let me ask you a question. Right. Let me ask you this. And pe- like, there was some people who hit me up and they were like, yo, that's super annoying. And I was like, I'm just. J- joking around, obviously. Right, we don't think. Yeah, no, probably. I mean, I, a little I like cultural appropriation grammar. really just evens the playing field. I feel. What do you mean? Just a little bit of cultural appropriation. Yeah, it's fun, huh? You want to tell people what's on your wrist here for the video folks at home watching on YouTube? Because it looks like I beat you now. Um, it is paints. It is. Stains. I am building a studio yes, from the are. ground up by myself. Well, there's a there's a couple other people. I have people helping me, but it's basically. nice. Um, it's, it's just a lot it's of looking work. good. You're crazy talented with like the DIY stuff. Um, I'm like I said, I'm a finisher. So like I can't build a wall, but I can do finishes. To you hear make that it. Trump? She can't build a wall. Can't build I a can wall. Do finishes to make it. Don't hire Jables. You, you do great work. Yeah. You're one of those people like who watches these shows and like you actually take notes and then execute it. It's crazy. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's actually pretty crazy. Because everybody in America sits home, watches those fucking shows, and is like, oh, man, I'm going to do it. I can do it. And then it's, it's like, no, no, Even you can't. Even staining a piece of wood, you guys. I mean, the technique of the rag and the brush and the thing. I mean, it's actually annoying. They make it look so easy. It's not. They really make everything. Oh, and then you just beep, 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 and put it on, and there you go. And you're trying to do it, and it's just like. What it is, it's a half-hour show. That right. was shot <laughs> over the course they of like two months. The, they don't show you the two months of hard work. Right. Otherwise. Or the trial and error of like putting something up and being like, oh, fuck. Yeah. You're like a real Joanna Gaines. Oh, thank <laughs> you. She doesn't do any of the work. Though. Really? No, she just designs it. Okay. So I'm more like Chip. Ah, there it is. <laughs> I'm more like Chip Gaines. <laughs> and um, I'll take it every time I go into Home Depot. I go, in theory, I am a lesbian, right? In theory. <laughs> softball. Love Home Depot. Yeah. Do all the actual work myself. Yeah. You know, I'm in there with Chip doing the demo. Yeah. And Joanna is like, okay, guys, we'll see you later. I'll be back to put in the furniture. And we're like, fuck you, Joe. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Did you see that she was, she met with J-Lo? Yeah, I'm, look, I'm never happy about that. Um, what do you mean? I don't, I don't like people who like J-Lo. I just don't understand it. I job's really don't. a job, right? You have to. Gig's a gig, you're right. Gig's a gig. You're right. But I saw, what I don't like about that combo is, you've seen Joanna's stuff, right? Yeah. I mean, she grabs an old fucking table from the 1900 you know that's dilapidated falling apart and like puts a whiskey barrel around it sure i mean that is her aesthetic can you imagine someone needs to do a skit of this her going into j-lo's house and trying to put something like that in there uh, 
Man. I mean, glam, glam, new, new, everything, right? She has everything white, too. White and new yeah. and marble. And, like, do you think that there's going to be an old pot with a jade, you know, pearl coming? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. An I- old boot. <laughs> an old World War II boot shellacked. <laughs> Right? Not a J-Lo's house. Not a J-Lo's house. So I, I guess I just don't understand what the collab is. Like, I understand J-Lo liking Joanna Gaines. Maybe she Joanna showed Gaines, up for I that don't... and that was it. Or maybe she's, yeah. you know, I opening don't... up a design store or whatever. But No, I guess apparently she's supposed to. Supposed to. Not supposed to. Ah. Supposed to do J-Lo's new beach house. And I just think... What is that? I mean, a lot of either a lot of fights, uh huh, a firing. Probably she'll be fired. Yeah, as soon as J Lo walks in and there's a that old boot on the shelf from the rail uh, railroads, you know, made out of old railroad yeah, spikes. Yeah, yeah, and like a couple of rusty helmets next to mm-hmm. it. Yeah, she's gonna lose all of lose her shit. Her shit. When that smell, when that wafting smell of that old sewing machine table (laughs) hits J-Lo's nose, I mean, she is just going to lose it. That rock alone. Oof. I just, again, I just don't, again, you're right. A gig's a gig. I I hope Joanna doesn't, like, love J-Lo. Yeah, they're besties in real life. I hope that J-Lo likes Joanna more than Joanna likes J-Lo. I told you my, my, you know, my best friend, actually I'm going to see this weekend up in Cleveland um, from college, Tristan, Tristan Drew. um, He did her, one of her music videos. So when we were living together in LA, he produced, you know, obviously a bunch of music videos and stuff like that. I think we've talked about him before. Which one? He did one of the JLo videos. I don't think it was the Ben Affleck one. I think it was the one either right before or right after, right? Because that one would have been memorable. Oh, yeah. But he had to, you know, he was in charge of like the room and all that shit. And he showed me her writer. And it was the craziest shit I've ever seen. Everything was white. Like ev- white, fresh white flowers, white sheets, white. I mean, it was, and it was all like Egyptian cotton, and all this other crazy shit. And I'm like, man, a music video shoot is, I don't know, 24 hours, 48 hours tops. And you're working nonstop. Like, that's kind of the the deal with music videos is you work all through the night. You oh yeah, burn you get your it crew. Done. Yep, you pay them overtime. Done. You burn your crew. You get it done. You get the fuck out of there. They just don't have that kind of money to spend on music videos anymore because it's you know the labels and all that stuff, right? Mm-hmm. When I saw this writer, I was like, dude, who needs this for for less than forty eight hours of being on? And it was it's J Lo. Like she needs that. This shit. kind of goes along with my. She's not Jenny from the Block. No, no, but this is my, it goes along with my theory because I saw her uh, doing a Today Show concert series. Okay. And she's just so nice and so sweet. And like after her performance is like, oh my God, you know, she was never like that. <laughs> and it is this renaissance that I see in every facet of like life and business. This renaissance of like, remember it used to be cool not so much cool but like you were definitely somebody mm-hmm. if you treated people like shit and like m- made your writer so you know it, it it made people feel like you were actually worth more because you were treating people like shit you had the power over every don't look at me don't look at them on set and it was this thing of like oh my god it, it's j-lo or it's mariah carey or I, the only don't look at him well the only benefit of the doubt that i'll give her is this and because i don't know what the real answer was right because when he when he came home and told me about this writer i said look her manager that that it was benny medina at the time mm-hmm. he was a fucking cocksucker like everybody knew that it was a cocksucker so was he designing this diva shit for her or was that really her i don't have the it was always a design answer. But everybody was being designed in that way at this time. And you remember it where it was just like if the bigger bitch, the bigger, the, you know, the more crazier the rider, the more in demand they tried to make themselves seem. And now this renaissance of like the Taylor Swift and people that, you know, how J-Lo is now, people that are just nice, yeah. genuinely love their fans, want to talk to people seem more accessible, more down to earth, Beyonce, 
talking to her crew just yeah, yeah, yeah. so like i i like the renaissance i don't know which one is the real one do you know what i mean yeah i don't know if she really is nice and she pretended to be a diva if she really was a diva and now they're all pretending to be nice i'm not really sure what it is but now it's moved into and even hiring people now like Here, here's what i think it is here's my okay. guess okay my guess is this in that era that you're talking about, yeah. there wasn't cell phones. There wasn't cameras in your face all day. People weren't recording you. Mm-hmm. Today's world, I, look, you're paranoid that people are recording you, filming you, whatever. If one of those diva moments got out and you're chewing whoever the fuck it is out, we've seen it with friends of ours. It'll go out on the internet mm-hmm. and that's what everybody's going to talk about and that's it, right? So I don't think, I, I think in today's world because of, the big brother aspect that we live in, you don't have a choice but to fake being nice. And she probably shuts the door to her house and is a complete bitch, you know? Maybe. And then here's another theory that there are so many people. There's, there's someone on YouTube waiting in the wings with a million trillion followers waiting to take your job. I think now the being good to work with is more powerful now. Yeah. than being actually super talented, right? So you see these people getting jobs and you go like, how did, how are they keep working? They're not super talented. Yeah. Because people love them. They're nice to everyone. Yeah. They talk to everyone. They're with, you know, they come out of their trailer and people like them. And the people that are hiring them worked as a PA before, mm-hmm. worked their way up, and now they remember the person that was nice to them. So it's this now... I like it, but it's this culture of you never know who you're fucking talking to because the PA can now be right. Yeah, and or, this is this or is something. the perfect segue that you. In an, I will call this the accidental seg- segue. Maybe it's you, on purpose. You don't know this story. Oh. I doubt it. They just cast the new Batman. Mm-hmm. Pattinson. Robert Pattinson yeah. is is the new Batman. I can. What you just said is a hundred percent true about. This guy, Mm -hmm. he is the nicest dude of all time. I've met him, yeah. Great to work with. Everybody likes him just because he's a nice, genuine dude. Doesn't really want to be super famous. He's never out. You don't ever see that guy out. So so when this came out of nowhere, of like, hey, he's Batman, then people are pissed off about it online. It is exactly what you said of like, hey, man, here's a guy who genuinely wants to be Batman. You know, wants to do this role, wants to do all this stuff. Like Ben Affleck never wanted to be Batman. No, he was a nightmare. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? And being a nightmare now, like you would have to be, I don't know who you'd have to be to be allowed to be a nightmare this day and age. I mean, Brad Pitt, maybe Leonardo DiCaprio, maybe, but even they aren't. I don't think so. Assholes, you know, even they got where they were from being just eager, good work, you know. Yeah, hardworking people. Hardworking yeah. people. They aren't of the people. They're not coming out of their trailer, but that's okay. They're good enough. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There's only a couple, I think, now that could get away with it. Everyone else, you've got to be fucking nice or else you will be replaced yeah. by the person waiting in line. Millions of people waiting in line. Again, from YouTube, from fucking Gossip Girl. I don't fucking yeah, know yeah, where yeah. he's from, right? Like, if you don't want to do it, there's someone that will. And again, from hiring people for our business too, it's like, if you don't want to do it, there's someone waiting in line yeah. that will. That's true. And just, you know, so be fucking nice. Like <laughs> what, it, it doesn't make me feel like you are more in demand if you're a smug fuck. Right. I just don't want to work with you. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't know. Yeah, so I like it. With with with, like with him it. being cast as Batman, I don't know. Look, I'm not. He's not my favorite actor in the world, but nice, nice dude. And you know, I'm sure he will work hard. And we'll see what happens. I know people What's are signing What's his social petition. media? Do you know as far as followers? He must have a shit ton. I, I don't know because I never see him out or posting or whatever. Yeah, that's true, huh? Um, you know, we saw we just saw Justin Long and what was it the, t- the Today Show? I know. Look, I work with Justin obviously and did accepted with him um nice guy uh you've met him before Mm -hmm. with me i think what in sundance nice dorky i mean super nice yeah he wasn't again not smug at all we talked to him at a bar and he was like oh shit but he doesn't he's a guy that never had social media i think he just got it because of this show Mm -hmm. like literally right now um and so i don't know i'd be curious is what uh 
Pattinson's whole shit is because I don't remember him ever doing anything social media wise. He was so famous so it fast he didn't built, have to. It must be built in from I'm gonna look it up right now. I, I he was so fast, so famous that I don't he might not have he might have been able to skip it. That's true, but the, but the Twilight fans, I mean, they yeah, he's got no Twitter or anything. They need it, okay? Yeah, well, there's a million accounts on here of fan sites for him mm-hmm. that are posting all this shit for him. So it's like, you know, it, look, if you can get away with it, I'm sure they looked at those numbers. If I you mean, can there's get away with it, dude. Holy shit, it, it's amazing. It is amazing if you can get away with it. Mm-hmm. Problem is, you, you just it's it's very rare. Yeah. Uh, like you, you look at like you, you know even DiCaprio's like he's got an Instagram but it's all like climate change shit. Somebody else is posting for him. It's not like he's taking selfies on a yacht doing coke with strippers. Like no, it's not Dan Bilzerian's he's account, old which school. it very could be. Yeah, it, I mean it really could be like very easily. But you know, uh, I don't know what made me get off on this fucking tangent. I'm on one today, Jay. Oh, it's the nice Renaissance, and I, I I for one like it because again I. I cannot, I am not a boss bitch, right? I am not a boss babe. I just want like nice people that want to work and I want to be nice and want to work, right? Yeah. There's assholes that try and like get in the way of that. But for the most, like I just never want to be mean. It's like no, my no, least no. favorite thing to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. I'll, Same. D- I'll do it, but it just... I don't want to I, look. I don't even want to rage against these people like at fucking George Artisan. Right. I just want everything to be good. Like, hey, just do your job and everything's rad. Um, right. Well, e- be even, nice. Try be and nice. make it right. Be like, nice. Don't be a. Don't tell don't me I don't have any asshole. friends. Yeah. You're being uh, mean. I'm going to be mean to you. Exactly. Hashtag tables for Jables. But uh, we ran into it yesterday. We were interviewing. We've interviewed a bunch of people because we're getting a whoever's watching this on YouTube. Um, the video show on YouTube. We're getting a massive studio and a bunch of workers and producers and all that shit. Right. And I've interviewed a bunch of people for a uh, sound tech guy and it guy and, and somebody to, to do DIT for all this video and all this stuff. We ha- we just hired the nicest guy, like the nicest, most hardworking guy. Hardworking that was it. and tech guy, problem solver. Like really that's all. But the nicest that's all human. I was, you just want to yeah. go into work every day yeah. and work with somebody that's nice and, and happy to be there. Uh, and that's, it's not that gonna is ninety percent you... of the battle, right there. Right. It's not gonna give me any lip. Yeah. You don't know. You know I don't like any lip. <laughs> right. When I tell you to do something, buddy. No, just joking. <laughs> I turn yeah. into a total bitch. One person works for me. Exactly. And I'm J Lo. His, his name is uh, Matt Devita, by the way. Shout out to Matt Devita because uh, he's starting uh, like in a week. Um. So we're we're amped about it. But again, nicest guy, hardworking. That's the guy that got the job. Like. Don't be a dick. Just don't be a dick. Pretty simple in this world. Pretty simple but in again, this world. It didn't used to be. That's what I'm saying. No, it, it didn't. used to be the most smug motherfucker that would come in and be like, yeah, would get it. Right. Because you'd be like, oh, I guess he knows like yeah, 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 more yeah. than I do. And now it's just like, fuck you, dude. We know that's all a fucking act. Yeah. You can be good and nice at the same time. It is. Is it harder? Yes. But it, it's the only way now. Yeah. You won't get the job if you aren't. It's true. It's absolutely true. Uh, and the only reason we have a job is because of our sponsors, James. That's Man, I right. am a Segway messiah. Messiah. Really, really great. Talking about ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Starting off with them today. Doing a bunch of big things with them coming up starting in June. It's, it's one of our favorite companies. Um, everything they do for people is, is amazing. I don't think we've gotten any negative feedback from Ghostbed in two, two over two years, like, um, no, it's 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 that one company was just like, dude, the mattresses are amazing, the pillows are amazing, adjustable bases, and and the fact that they offered fifteen percent permanent discount to military and first responders, like, it's crazy. They know what the audience is, um, yeah. They know that it, that's fifty percent of our audience, and like, how can we help? N- nobody's ever reached out and done that, yeah. like ever, ever, um, to do that, and it's. Uh, it's one of those brands where it's like, dude, I, I, I know it's a, it, look, buying a mattress is a price tag, man. Um, but 15% off is like an extra 200 bucks and all that shit. So and like, it's something you use for so for years. Yeah. Long that you're making an investment. You're getting, you know, a discount on it. It's, and it's 
will last you. And you don't have to, you don't have to pay for it up front. 36 months yeah. pays you go. No interest or anything. I don't know how they do that, but uh, good on them. Uh, either way, man, we hit them up and said, look, we would like to do something really long term with you guys because uh, we love your company and, and the audience loves the company. And that's what we're trying to do on both shows between Ross Patterson Revolution and Drinker Bros Podcast is find the sponsors that everyone loves and then just keep going with those. Um, time to time, we'll have some ridiculous sponsors, but you need it. Um, we do this fucking yeah. boner. We do Roman ED on on drinking bros, but it's weird. Like, dude, people go through that shit all the time. So it's like, all right, cool, man. And we'll have a couple on here that'll be like smaller companies discounted yeah. rates so that we can help them out. But for the most part, we don't. It's like anything. We don't ever want to send you to like Georgia Artisan. Do you know what I mean? When there's a company that is always across the board good. Yeah. We got to tell you about it because it's what we fucking preach about all the time. All so. the time on the show. So uh, shout out to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Go there um, for your new mattress. Get, get your, your dills there. Um, and again, the same URL for, for this and drinking bros. I host both. And it's just like it, it all feeds into one, man. And uh, you get the discount on both, both shows. So super stoked to be working with those guys. Next up, we got blackriflecoffee.com. BRCC, you're drinking it right now. I am. You're going hard. I'm. I get a little mug myself. You've got, mm. we've got to. It's a necessity. Did I mention I'm building a whole studio? Yeah, did I way. mention that I just got done surfing? So my hair is still wet. Don Patrol. Yeah. Would Swayze you ever, living would you that ever life. Surf. I would love that if you did. Uh, I would. The problem is this: um, I grew up in Georgia, and don't know how. Yeah, there was there wasn't a, like the the nearest ocean was like. Savannah, and even then, you can't. Maybe you can't you'd surf take in lessons Savannah. with your boy, with your son. Maybe. I mean, I, you would I, be at the same level. It's the same principle. Yeah, I know. I would. No. I would. No, I would. I would be at the same level as a five-year-old. I would probably be at that level at, right now too. Like, yeah, it's been forever. It would be good to have a little. People love it. Um, look, uh, again, Tristan. We were just talking about him. He loves it, man. It was one of those things that uh, some people go to the gym, work out. Everybody has like a thing that de-stresses them in this yeah. life. Surfing was it for him. Surfing is it for a lot of my friends. Um, so I, I understand it. And look, there's nobody who loves the ocean more than I do. Like, right. I will sit there all goddamn day. Sure. Uh, I love it. Mm. I love the beach. You sit there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I can. Well, I like. No, I, lo- I love going out in the water. I love, yeah, you do more than I do. For dude, sure. I love doing all of it. So, like, um, I- I'm a big, big ocean guy where it's just like, all right, cool, man. You know, if I could just sit here with a 12. Cool, man. Really get loose out there. Um, I don't know how we got, got into that. Oh, uh, sorry, after being sorry, distracted sorry, from BlackRifleCoffee.com. Go there. Veteran owned. You've heard me talk about it 10,000 times on the show. Sign up for their Coffee Club of the Month program. It's the best in the biz. Uh, 20% off. Revolution. Promo code. Uh, next up, we got StrikeForceEnergy.com. <laughs> Shabloinkers. Four amazing flavors. Lemon, ridge, grape, orange. 10-pack, 40-pack, 750-milliliter bottle. So you can boom, boom. This guy. Pop a couple squirts in and go. Go to StrikeForceEnergy.com. No carbs or sugars. Great. Great for drinking in the summer. Uh, Get it. Kick the can. Tasty, tiny little tin pouch. That's it. Rip it open. Squeeze it in any liquid available Revolution, promo code, 20% off. They also have a subscription of the month program. Last but not least, this is what you came for. This is what you came for. This is what you're spending all this money on. You know, I'm kidding. You're not spending any money. It's a, it's a free show. Whenever I hear people bitch about it, like well, a podcast, I'm like, mm-hmm. it's a free fucking show. Don't listen it's if free. you don't want to. It's free. No, you're it's not free. getting charged for it. No. Now, if you're pissed off at Game of Thrones... Which everybody and their mother seems you're to be pissed charged. off about it. You're being charged for that. I get it, man. Free pain. Rage. Rage against the machine on that. But for a podcast, it's free. Nobody's yeah. fucking charging you. So shut the fuck up. Uh, and use some straight razors on your face. Some straightrazors.com. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. Oh, you right, kids? Oh, boy. No headphones for you, no huh? No headphones today. Oh, is it the hair? It's the hair. I want everybody to see this glorious mane that I have. This was a process. Nail. I'll get my nail done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I got to go to Cleveland at 5 a.m. tomorrow. Ooh, Oof. but I'm loving it. Loving it. I know. Are you going to uh, uh, get, get your nails 
did tomorrow? No. Okay. I'm not going to get them done until I'm done with this fucking studio because it's like, what's the point, uh, yeah, dude? You're, you're right. Like, you're right. I'm just going to be a dirty ass. A dirty ass. A dirty ass. For yeah. two weeks, basically. Uh, after after you're done being a dirty ass, go to straightrazors.com. Shave up. Yeah. Isn't that nice, guys? You, you work hard. You guys know what I'm talking about, Ross. Give me a second. Yeah. You guys know what I'm talking about. You're working hard, getting dirty. How good does it feel at the end of the day to just groom it all, get it all together? It feels Again, great. I can't do that yet. no. no. You can't. Two weeks till I can groom from head to toe, but gosh, it feels good. Th- throw a little perfume on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stand for myself. You guys would do the cologne of Cologna. Course. Smolder. Uh, straightrazors.com. That's my fave. That's my aftershave. Oil. That's my whole shit. Uh, it's great, razor. great, great shaving kits for Father's Day. So pick it up. You can get it engraved too with your father's name on it, which is rad. Um, big, big fan of straightrazors.com. Promo code Revolution twenty percent off. And go out by Matt's book, man. Uh, I, look, I got to write it with him. Thank you for my service is on pre-sale now. All of these pre-sale orders in hardback count toward the New York Times bestseller list. This is we're hitting we're hitting it with this one. We're making it you with this one. You guys are doing it. Go to Amazon.com. Uh, and yes, we had some problems with Amazon in the past, uh, but this is a biography. Nobody's going to shoot this down. Um, so it's gotten through enough people. Uh, the CIA. The, yeah. Where uh, I, it's at least Amazon. The CIA, can handle it. the Department of Defense, so we're good on this. The publishers. I mean, it's gone through enough yeah. things that Amazon can't really say shit now. Thank you for my service. I want to start off by saying thank you to DJ, DJ Khaled. For another he, one? He, another one. He dropped a new album, uh, Midnight, last night. So as I was going to bed, it was like, oh, fuck. All right. What's cool. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll listen to it today. Dropped an album and a video at the same exact time. I, I didn't. I don't want to stay up and listen to the whole album. I don't want to get in, into that fucking mess last night. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I had to get up super early. Got to get up super fucking early tomorrow. I'm like, man, I'll I'll listen to this on the way on the way out today. The video though, I popped on before I went to bed, and it was what was with Nip- Nipsey Hussle. Mm. Um, and that was the last video that he was working on, the last video shoot, and. It, not only is the song incredible, the video is incredible. Uh, my only, th- it's, it's him and John Legend. And I'm like, uh, but. The song? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the song is great. Um, really fucking good. Uh, man, I, it sucks, man. Because N- Nipsey Hussle looked great. Uh, I mean, he looked, it was one of those videos where, it, and we talked about this earlier at the top, like usually they gun through these things or whatever, like, it, it looks like they spent money on this. It looks amazing. Uh, he looks amazing in it. The song is great. If you're going out on one, it's, it's, this is one. a great one to go out on. So uh, peep it if you can. Uh, DJ Khaled. Another oh, one. I'm Fuck, man. I'm surprised at, at what he is able to do. Um, I mean, it's just nuts. I'm going to read, read you some of these features on here. Okay. Right? So I just told you Nipsey Hussle. Mm-hmm. Uh, John Legend, mm-hmm. uh, Big Sean, mm-hmm. Lil Wayne, sure. Um, I mean, Meek Mill, sure. Uh, Chris Brown, got it. Cardi B, okay. I was gonna say any girls. <laughs> Twenty One Savage. Uh, I mean, th- I mean, this is the craziest list of all time. Here. Is that that blurry like... face kid? <laughs> Rick Ross, Jeezy, Justin Bieber, Chance the Rapper. I mean, I don't, again, I don't know how he's able to do this. And he is just a producer, right? Sorry. Yes. So All he, he makes, does is scream out, DJ Khaled. And he does the beats and makes the songs. That's though, it. Right? But I he's mean, putting out not, the album. That's it. That's making the whole song but, and producing it and everything. That's who not can nothing. put out an album called DJ Khaled and your DJ Khaled? featuring all of these people because all these people got feature credits right it's like he's not singing mm-hmm. he's not rapping he's just screaming out dj Khaled and making the music yeah but but that's a producer not a rapper not a rapper no but a dj so it'd be like it'd be like swedish house 
that makes on their computer, like makes all the beats yeah. and like makes the actual song yeah. and then has people like sing on it. Uh, I guess it's fucking weird to me. It's really weird. It's it- not weird to me only because I'm like, I know how much he puts into it. All of these people that feature on it know how much he puts into it and has put into their songs in the past that like he is someone that the person for once that is actually doing all of the work right. and telling people what to even say and what the hook is and all of this is actually on the fucking front of the album. You know what I mean? It'd be like the director creator of a show having their face on the fucking show instead of the weird. actor that they, it'd be weird, but I'm just saying, what's your issue with it? My issue is this, his job, everything you described is a producer. It, you're, you're not make, no, they don't make the music. What's that? The producers don't make the music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, no. Yes, they produce the beats. Like that, they, they produce all of it. So, like Dr. Dre produces his own beats, right? He's a right. producer. Uh, he's produced for other people. Right. Riz is produced for other people. Unless you're singing, you don't get a title credit in a song. But we all know DJ Khaled is ridiculous, anyways. Yeah, yeah, but that's what I have the issue with. Of like, hey, his ridiculousness. Just, just say that these other people are just rapping in it. Like it, it's DJ Khaled featuring. That means you sang in it. You didn't sing in it. All you did was scream DJ Khaled. That's the issue I have with DJ Khaled. Like, hey, man, it's fine that you produced an album. Mm -hmm. And it's brought to you by DJ Khaled or produced by DJ Khaled. But you're not a rapper or a singer. But you're taking the credit of a rapper and a singer. And that's what's strange to me. Like, it's a producer. You know what I'm saying? It'd be like if if, uh, Jerry Bruckheimer just, you know, showed up in Top Gun and you were like, what the fuck is going on here? Like, are you, are you just walking down the, the runway in Top yeah, Gun, dude? Yeah, but you'd be like, he did the producer. all the work. You're the, you're the producer, that, but that's your job. You're the producer. There's a category at the Grammys called Best Producer. Producer of the Year. All of these categories. That's what DJ Khaled does. Um, and, and I think he called the album My Son Assad. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Because he's ridiculous and he brings this. I don't mind the ridiculousness of it, but don't share a fucking singing credit with people. It's his album. But he's not singing on it. He can do whatever he wants. Yes, he can, technically. But that's crazy to me, man. That is fucking crazy to me. A singing credit. Because it's DJ Khaled featuring like this Nipsey Hustle thing. Is Have his, you heard the songs? Does he not sing at all? No, he doesn't sing at all. Okay. He doesn't rap. He doesn't do anything. All he does is scream DJ Khaled. So like at the beginning, it's DJ Khaled. I'm like, all right, cool. But it says DJ Khaled featuring these other people. And I'm like, does he scream out like he almond milk and sing? stuff too? Like all of his uh, yeah, sponsors? Yeah, 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 yeah. Occasionally. He'll go through all of his shit. Dead serious. He'll shout out a champagne. Silk. Or, My yeah. son Assad. Mm-hmm. And it's like, wait. Are you taking the rapping credit for screaming out shit in the background as a hype man? Just a fucking hype man in the background? Right. <laughs> featuring these other rappers? Oh, you mean the people that are actually singing? <laughs> yeah, they're featured instead of... That's what I don't get. It's like, hey, man, I, look, I recognize his talent as a producer. More importantly, an entertainer. Like, the shit that he went through to do all this. Like, I told you the story about his agency. Oh, yeah. Um, he's... I, look, I, I don't want to say that he's personally responsible for Snapchat blowing up, but I, I kind of feel like he is, him and the Kardashians. Yeah, and I think they're personally responsible for it not doing mastered that well social media, anymore. yeah. Uh, this kid now, um, he's got, you know, 2 million followers, 3 million followers the on Assad Instagram. Yeah. yeah. How do you feel about that? I don't know, man. I, part of me is just like, dude, should we start tagging our kids and fucking blowing up their shit? I don't know. And, and, and I know we, there was another a previous episode yet. which we, I don't we, think yet. we talked about it, but I don't know what the right answer is because I'm, you know, our, the biggest thing we suffer from, you and I, is, is lack of social media. Um, and I, look, I, I'll be an asshole and say this, but like, I, dude, I have one of the best social media accounts there is on Instagram. It's fucking crazy all day long and I'm always doing weird shit. And everybody's just like, dude, you're, you have my favorite account. It doesn't translate into like a, a fucking model. Like, there's a bunch of ass models on Instagram where you're just like, bro. We have people, friends of ours, wives and shit, who have like hundreds of thousands of followers. And it was because like, they're the wives of somebody. I understand, though, but that's that, crazy. Yeah. That's crazy to me. 
So like, that's the only thing. So when I look, when I look at this of like, Hey, should you, because it's such a, a, a important part of business growing up, maybe if DJ Khaled's doing it, I can tell you this. But don't you think 15 or 16 is a good time to start? I, I don't, don't know. have to start at two. I don't know when kids start. I really don't. Well, ours are not going to start until. No, no, no. I, and yeah. That's fine. Yeah. But like, I will say this, like as much as I just shit on DJ Khaled for taking rapping credits and songs that he doesn't rap or sing on. He is a marketing genius mm-hmm. um, and has built a fucking empire. So if he's tagging his kids and shit, I don't, maybe that, that is the right answer. Because maybe this, his kid at 15 or 16 will be a goddamn millionaire. Or he'll be a fucking nightmare. One of the two. It's a hard call on both of those. Well, there's this new, you know, down on social media renaissance as well that's happening. Where it's like all these people with a bunch of following, you know, followers are coming out. Yeah, we watched that and Selena Gomez like, Selena interview. Selena Gomez, yeah. this JoJo girl, mm. turned off her comments. I mean, that's her really? whole business. But she was getting comments that were like, you need to staple your eyes shut and like swallow bleach. You're so annoying, blah, blah, blah. She's 15. Yeah. Is she really? So, yeah. So you can either. She's older. She seems older? Yeah. I thought, I thought she was she like seemed... 17 or 18. I thought she was too and playing younger. Yes. But she's 15 because the person that was interviewing her was like, do you play younger for a reason or whatever? And she's like, I'm 15. And I looked it up and she was. She's like, wow. I'm not. She was like, you're just used to 15 year olds acting like they're 25. I'm 15. Like, yeah, yeah, I yeah, can yeah, dress yeah. like this. I can do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's normal. Yeah. You guys are so des- desensitized that I'm supposed to be 20, you know, look like I'm 25 and have my ass out at 15. Right. Um, but yeah, she's turning off her comments. They did a whole thing on her of bullying and how social media is bad for our psyche and blah, blah, blah. And everything I'm hearing now, I wonder what it's going to be like when our kids are that age. Is it going to be going so full circle that it's actually not cool? Uh, that, would, that would be to awesome. To be on it, you know, awesome. or it's cooler to actually have conversations with your friends and it's cooler to actually put the phone away and it's like a rule that everybody I, knows look, and like, I've I know, been, I know. I've been doing that more and more right. um, and where I'm just, I don't want to take it into restaurants. Yeah. I don't want to take it into, if, the, if you and I aren't together, because you and I both work a lot. Yeah. Um, if you and I aren't together, I have to have it on me because I'm worried about, you know, either you or the kids or whatever and blah, right. blah, blah. But uh, when we are together at dinners now, like I don't, I don't take it in anymore yeah. to, to a restaurant or anything else. Yeah. I don't want, I don't want to be bothered with that stupid shit. Like nothing. Um, so yeah, I, I understand it. That would be my, my dream. Yeah. And I don't get, didn't. I wasn't, I didn't grow up with social media, nor do I like really get super into it now, but I could see, I guess I could see if you were totally into the amount of likes that you were getting. If that, if you were totally into the comments, I mean, I'll get sucked in sometimes and I find myself looking at it for way too long at like something that I post and looking at the likes and looking at the views. And I go, fuck, if I was like 15 or 16 and I posted that would be your entire two or life. three times a day. Yeah. Well, well, not only that, if you're 15 or 16, that's your entire life because it's all your friends. That's all you know. And you're consumed by it. My kid was trying to talk to me and I go like, oh, fuck. Like I was like, this is crazy i like yeah. put it away yeah because he's like playing and i'm not looking at him and and that's why i'm really just not on it is because i've had too many moments like that where i've gotten into something and my kid's trying to talk to me and i know it happens to everybody it does and it's just sort of like fuck it i just hate it and so again you have to i have do to do it but for like- both of us kind of because i just can't like i i really get you take last night though, like even last night where I had a bunch of shit to do work and you know, with, with the phones as big as they are now and I'll hold this goddamn atrocity up. Um, cause it's, it's, uh, this is a $1,500 phone from, uh, uh I, I, mm-hmm. iPhone. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and the only reason I'm saying this is cause it's a piece of shit. Oh. Like don't buy it. I bought it for storage cause I'm doing, you know, there's so much video shit we have to do yeah. editing Dropbox, all that stuff that I need all the storage. It is a piece of shit. It is no better than your phone that you have. So please, like I, I know we did a story on this maybe three or four months ago. This still continues now. It's still a piece of shit. Your old phone is fine. There's no need to get a new phone unless you're in production and you need storage like this. Don't buy this. It's, it's a fucking waste. The pictures um, are pretty nice though. 
the pictures are fine, but whatever, man. Uh, um, uh, but and, the, and here's why I'm saying all this. Last night was a perfect example of I get home, I had all this fucking work to do, and because this thing is so goddamn big, you don't necessarily want to sit at your desk anymore or you know pull up the laptop. Like sometimes you're just on your phone writing emails because it's easier, right? Mm -hmm. And it has gotten easier because your screen's so big. So when I came home last night and I was like, Hey, I got to work. And you're like, all right, I'll, I'll take the kids. And I was like, you know what? Fuck that. I'll just stay up later. I'll work after they go to bed and then I'll deal with this stupid shit later. Like I don't want the lasting image that my kids have of me as a, a dad when they were younger. It's just me glued to a fucking screen in front of them. Like it's not. So oh I'm trying to make a, a even more concerted effort to, but what's Not what I'm saying, shit. what's interesting is that it's actually on, like, I've seen it on TV, the Today Show, like, for the past three days of doing stories of people, bigger people with followings. I don't know how I feel about that. Like, they've gotten to a point where they're... That's what I was going to say. Where they they're can, rich. They're yeah. rich now yeah. from it. So, if you are on the come up and you're using the using Instagram to build your business... You know, you don't have a choice. You don't have a choice. And I think it's kind of like, oh, yeah, Selena. Yep. Did you turn off? Exactly. Did you stop using yeah, yeah, social yeah. media now? And that's what it because is. Because you're fucking rich. Yeah. Cool. Or, you know, Instagram it, turning off the likes and the, you know, comments like. And like I said, trying to probably sell them back to you. It's just sort of like, yes, you have a platform to tell me that. But how'd you get there? Right. And, and I'm, I'm bashing I, the very thing that got you there. I'm, I'm with you this. And I, I had this discussion with uh, one of our sponsors, uh, Led by Iron. Yeah. Um, love those guys. Love their, their T-shirts, by the way. Um, I always wear that shit. And uh, I had this same conversation with him because it, they, um, Tyler Rainey is his name. They have a, a small business. It's uh, first responders, 100% first responder owned. And he's like, man, we are working. They're like, he's a working firefighter. Mm -hmm. His partner, Josh Sheens, is a working paramedic. Um, the, both of them together, or uh, sw switch it, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, Josh. Um, uh, Josh is a uh, firefighter and, mm -hmm. and uh, Tyler's paramedic. Both of them have jobs, yeah. but they're also trying to create a company. Yes. But you're forced to use social media all day to promote your companies. Same with us for these shows and everything else. Like, you have to do it. Um, yes, if you're Selena Gomez or JoJo, they've made a gajillion they've dollars. They've made enough now. She, you didn't see her turning off her comments when she was on the... yeah. When she wasn't quite rich exactly. yet. Exactly. So, and you know, I, I just hate people that have made it to a certain level that are super rich trying to tell me what to do right, or right, trying right. to tell me what life is like. <laughs> I just, you know, I fucking hate that shit. Yeah. So when I say I don't like it, it's a double-edged sword. Like, it's not cool for me to say I don't like it, right? Because I need it. Yeah. And I, and I, I think it's more normal to be grappling with it. I think it's more a normal stance not to be Selena Gomez and say, I don't think you should even use that. To not do that, but to say that it is a struggle, that yeah. it is a balance, that yeah. it is something that you grapple with. And I know everybody does, whether you have 20 followers or a million, it's, it's still a struggle of like, I need to do this. If you're doing it for business, yeah, if you're, you know, if you're doing it to just show your ass, I guess, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, look, you could probably turn the comments off, <laughs> but you need those for your self worth, so you won't do it, right? Yeah. Not until you're Selena Gomez, and you can do. Hey guys, I have two hundred and sixty-eight million followers. Yeah, and now I've decided I'm not. So gonna... guys, social media is not good. Yeah. What? When? Yeah, you're already rich, so it's fine. Um, with me. Here's when you'll know how rich I am because I'll, I'll walk away from social media altogether. Um, that's when you know how rich I am. It's, it's going to be like fucking Ben Affleck showing up and Goodwill hunting to get Matt Damon for work and he's not there. <laughs> that's when you're going to know where you're just like, huh? Favorite? Huh? Favorite scene because. And then oh. he walks out to the, the back of the car and you're like, oh, all right, he's, he's gone. That's when you'll know that I'm rich. So it, like beyond rich enough, like fuck you money rich. When you never see me on social media again on any, oh. any platform, that's when you'll know how rich I am. You'll be like, oh, fuck. He did, dude. He just walked away. That's it.
I'll still do podcasts, obviously, but I'm that just going to put them the out. That would be the great thing. That would be, be the, the great best. thing that if that people could only know what we're up to from the podcast, yeah. right? And we could put our the context <laughs> on it, and we can say things like to explain it, and you can hear tone and just these pictures just that you are and like, I sitting in a studio together, rapping about life, and literally, like, you go to my. You'll go to my Instagram account at ST James, ST James. It's just that video over and over of Ben Affleck and the thing in just every Ben Affleck square. shrugging, looking through the windows, shrugging. No, Where's this Ross? This is what he does. This is and what that's he does. It. So this is when he first like. <laughs> this is Ben Affleck. He's trying to show that he can act a little bit, which he cannot. Right? <laughs> he is not good. <laughs> He's good at like one liners, like get in the back. He's, he's, he's had get in his the moments. back of the car. Yeah, he, no. He's had his moments. Dazed mm. and confused. He's yep. fucking great. Yeah. Uh, but those boiler are room. One liners. There's no monologues. Anytime he, he has to no, get into it. He's a, got one monologue in Boiler Room that is awesome. But it's. I, lo- I love it. It's Affleck love and it. it's forced. But so he looks in the window, <laughs> he leans back on the thing. This is a video show, too. Yeah. So I'm going to be silent for a second. Sure. But he just. And like walks away like that's him like thinking, thinking. Yep. Walking down. So it was not good, but it is one of my favorite scenes from that movie. Ah, I, I liked I look. I, I love Goodwill Hunting. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. So good. I'll, I'll give it to Affleck on that one. Um, I liked him in that. I liked him in Days and Confused. Do. Of course you would. I liked him in uh, Boiler Room. Um, and then I think that's about it for me. Okay, he's been in like a bunch of shit. I know, and the, gone, that's, that's gone probably girl. the only three. Gone Girl. I, he wasn't good in Gone Girl. I, I here's the thing. He wasn't I, believable. That girl was fucking amazing in Gone Girl. She was I don't amazing. Even know her she name. made the whole thing fucking happen. It's her something name. She's weird, great, but um, it's something hard to pronounce. But out. that could have been anyone else in Gone Girl. Anyone, but it had to be made. Yeah. So he he was there to. To make sure it got made, right? Did he direct it? He did. Yeah. Yeah. Great director, actually. Great director. He really him, does need to be behind the scenes him, for sure. Favreau, um, yeah. all that stuff. Like, ah, look, there, there's always been a rumor. I, I, there's always been a rumor that that was the biggest sticking point with him and Jennifer Garner. It was like, hey, we have enough money. Let's just be parents for a little bit and take, why don't you take a, a year off, a couple years off, enjoy your kids. And he's like, no, I want to be famous. I mean, dated J-Lo. Remember that whole fucking shit? Mm-hmm. So, you know, it happens. I, I, I wouldn't do it, me personally, but whatever. You wouldn't do what? At a certain point, you have enough money and you could do whatever. I don't know. We brought this up with Steve, Steve Zahn the other day. Remember? With uh, Reality Bites. Where's Steve Zahn? Yeah. I found him. So one of our listeners uh, wrote in and that like, he showed up at, uh, at a local election I guess he lives in Kentucky. Great. Um, showed up at a local coming, election dressed for you, Steve. Dressed as a revolutionary war figure, um, and uh, was just telling people to vote for some candidate. Okay. Yeah. Steve. Yeah. yeah. Coming for you, Steve. No, I, I, you, you, I can tell you my walk away point. I can tell you exactly what it is. Uh, it's, a, it's a dream, and it's not going to come true. So who fucking cares? But um, if these got made into an HBO series. A Night She Cries, that whole series, the St. James series, got made into a... It's, look, there's going to be five of these total. Uh, third one's coming next year. There's going to be five of these total. Five, I want to do five seasons on HBO. Do a season for each book. Uh, do the Ric Flair biopic. And then be done with life. Okay, so you're never going to be done. Is that what you're saying? No, that's, that's a six-year plan is what that would be. Mm-hmm. If I could do it. Mm-hmm. The problem is it's just not going to happen. So it really doesn't matter anyways. It's gonna, they're going to cast somebody fucking horrific to be St. James Street James, you know? Oh, you wanted to play. You would play. Yeah, motherfucker. I'm like, yeah. I'm, I've been playing this character for so years. It, yeah. So if they were like, we'll do it, but. You couldn't do it. Ben Affleck. You, you couldn't do it. Do it. Uh, the voices, too. The audiobooks are too massive. Right. So you, just, you couldn't get away with it. Not only that, but like all the illustrations images like you already have who this character is in and your mind. i would have to play samantha the asian yeah the the, You'd the, have the to small asian, asian man. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah samantha davis you think the asian man. That? no put some <sighs> yellow paint on you yeah but that would be the end of it and and the reason why i'm i'm 
we got into this discussions. I had this with Matt because I was like, hey, man, if your book blows up. What then? What then? What, who's going to play you? Whatever. And somebody wrote in and said it'll probably be uh, one of our listeners wrote in and said probably be Chris Pratt. And I was like, ah, I get a chuckle out of that because I said Sean William Scott. And oh, that's funny. Chris Pratt is more actually likely. That's what I said. Mm -hmm. So when I forget who it was that wrote in, but I was like, you know, like that one I could actually probably see. Um, right. Just because of and you need, personality you'll need a name. wise. Yeah. yeah. You'll need a name. You'll need a box office fucking thing and all that shit. And, you know, a guy with a beard and funny. And uh, if Ryan Reynolds could. I think he's too old. Up. Too old. Yeah, you're right. Too old. Um, I Yeah. I, I saw him recently. Just, you know. Because you kind of have to be a smart ass, you know? So yeah. there but has to be I, like a comedic side to you as well as like. Because we have a few of our friends going through this right now. And uh, Clint Romache, uh is one of them. Oh, right. Um, George Clooney bought his book and they're making that to a movie. And they're in uh, the development stages and casting and all that other stuff. Uh, Marcus Luttrell. I asked Marcus about it. And I was like, what was the story with that? And Mark Wahlberg, you know, mm -hmm. like what was the real shit of it because he looks nothing like you he's yeah. about half marcus's size half marcus's size doesn't really look i mean they're, doesn't they're do both doesn't like, do a boston i mean doesn't do a, a texas accent mm -mm. does just mark mark Wahlberg. i appreciate that but it's I, i'm sure it was a discussion right like i appreciate him not well, doing he, here, a fake here's accent. here's the discussion with that mark Wahlberg is look i, I don't i'm not a fan of mark Wahlberg's acting business wise that guy's a fucking boss and when he signs on for a movie, it gets made immediately. Yeah. So he got that movie made immediately, and, and I get it. Um, mm -hmm. the, one of the, I think a good fit was Bradley Cooper playing Chris Kyle. Like, that, yeah. was, that was awesome. But he made it a good fit. He did everything, gained weight, talked like Bulked him, yeah, yeah, did, yeah, 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 did yeah. all the things. Did where, the work, yeah. Where Mark Wahlberg was like, well, I'm going to do it. <laughs> how I want to do it. And you can either say yes to the money or not <laughs> up to you right well i know this like uh, like the the fair shake side of this is uh mark Wahlberg did ask and sit down with marcus and say hey i want to do this and this and this and marcus was like man just be yourself like it's fine and again i do appreciate that because you know i hate a fake southern accent there's nothing worse yeah a real one hot awesome fake one really distracting and gross to me <laughs> most of the time who just did one that we were Oof. the movie that we were Vince watching Vaughn. that we're like yeah, we talked about this Vince Vaughn, yeah. yeah why a few listeners wrote in after that episode and they were like hey man you were right that is the most violent ending of a movie of all time and i was just like i, I told know, you i didn't watch i know it. i was like i told Slept you Slept through it can you believe it yeah who's gonna play saint james street james james get the fuck out of here no, that's I'm crazy saying, like if if Mark Wahlberg sat down with you and said, hey, no. you would say no, huh? No, you've got to. It's got to be you the, would talk, the Make voice. sure you talk to me first before you <laughs> before you decline. I'll just be I could just go with the me. I'll go to the meeting with you. It's no big deal for TV. You can get away with being uh, not like not massively famous for a movie. No. There's yeah. no way. There's For no TV, way a studio though, would approve HBO's a movie. HBO's behind it. That's HBO enough. would be fine with it. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. then you cast names around you, and you're fine. Um, yeah, yeah. You're fine in that world. So, yeah. But that that would be it. And then I would walk away and say, "All right, we're done. Yeah. We're all done." Always here. talk to me before you decline, Mark Wahlberg. Though, please <laughs> run it by. Just run it by me. Don't come home and say, I had a meeting with Mark Wahlberg and I told him no. Do you know what I mean? Always tell me before sure, sure, and then sure. we can kind of go from there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. Of course. Nobody's playing St. James Street, James. Come on. Of course not. Come on. Can you imagine Mark Wahlberg trying to? No. No. Somebody asked Sorry. me to play Randy Savage. Or anyone. A bunch of people I hit me up about Randy Savage. That. And they were like, hey. And you could definitely do it, too. Because they're making that uh, Hulk Hogan uh, biopic with Netflix. Do we need to do a dark, dark spray tan on you? Get those yeah. glasses. The neighbor has the glasses. Yeah, yeah I've got mesh, the glasses. I've got the glasses. A mesh, bright, bright yellow mesh. And then... I'd triple stack for... Uh, I mean, I'd go like maybe just put you on video. D ball. I'd, I'd D ball what, some steroids. Yeah. Um, 
but like the old school, like shitty kind that are yeah. really terrible for it has you. Has to be. Has to be. That's the only way you can achieve. It's the only way. The way you're he already looks. going with the hair. Let's just keep that going. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think we might need to get you on video. And I told the whole I need to get you on world tape. Yeah. that you were a prima donna, yeah, and you are. Oh my God, that would be a dream. Oh, the best. The be- to be Savage or Ric Flair would be the best. Would be the fucking best. And when I saw Ric Flair going to the hospital yesterday, fuck TMZ, by the way, while we're at it. Um, this is the second time they've pronounced him dead. And it, he's fine. Ric Flair is fine. He's fine. It was a procedure that was already scheduled. And they were like, he's rushed into emergency care. Critical just- condition. Things are fucking dire. No, they're not dire. And Harvey Levin, you know what I would love? Is that fucking jackass, Harvey Levin? If people just started posting, like, uh, whoever did the Russia Facebook ads, mm-hmm. great. If, if, since people believe those, whatever dipshits out there believe them, that influence my boating. Make those for Harvey Levin dying. And just post them once a week. He's dead. He's been rushed to the. He's dead. They're, le- he's they're dead. reading his last rites. You know how many times they've done that to my favorite people where it's just like, and then they're fine. Lil Wayne, he's on his deathbed. Everybody's praying. He's got an hour left to live. <laughs> no, he's fucking fine, dude. And he's on tour a month later. Yeah, Rick exactly. Flair, twice. He's dead. He's not going to make Lil it. Lil Wayne, oh, wait, you already said that. Yeah. All these people. And it's just like, dude, fuck off, man. Uh, even the John Singleton story they got wrong. They were like, no, he's on life support. And it's like, he's, he's fucking dead. Right. He's dead. He's already been pronounced dead. Like, we're good, dude. Right. So, yeah, when I saw that, too, everybody was like, oh, man, Ric Flair. I was like, Flair is fine. He's probably, he probably woke up from whatever procedure that was already scheduled and was just like, woo! Punch, yeah, punch people in the face. Yeah. Probably punched himself in the face. Yeah. Yeah. That's Ric Flair, brother. Just kept punching himself in the face. Uh, I do want to report on a death, though, that I'm happy that happened. Grumpy Cat. Remember that fucking viral cat? Grumpy Cat. Oh, it's the meme, and it's yeah. like... He died. He died. Gone. No, Whatever non-RIP is, that's what I want for... Oh. That thing was so goddamn dumb to me. You know I hate cats anyways. Yeah, we do. Um... There's a line in, what, A Night She Cries, where it was just like he, the dude has all boys, eight boys, eight sons, and the, the mom asked about getting a cat, his wife. Mm-hmm. And he's like, are you fucking kidding me? Way to ruin our dinner. If we got a cat, all of our sons would be sucking each other's dicks. That's what, like, every time I see a cat photo, and I've got a, one of my and best that's friends. just a little taste of what you get. With what? Yeah, cats books oh yeah the, the books are comedically aggressive would be an understatement all our sons would be sucking each other's dicks, dicks if you got a fucking cat so when i saw Gr- oh, grumpy cat died um i mean come on dude i fuck that cat yeah. I, don't, I don't give a shit about that cat yeah uh, be like, oh, grumpy cat. like he's trending at number one number one in the world on twitter right now because we tape these monday shows on friday usually um Grumpy Cat is trending number one. Like, what? What the fuck is that? A, a, a cat meme? Oh, he was grumpy. This is amazing. And now he's dead. <laughs> Good. Good, dude. He should have died years ago. I think he was six or seven years old. I don't even oh, know how he's long. He's grumpy. Yeah. And now he's dead. <laughs> You're so fired up about this cat i hate cats and i hate the grumpy okay. cat every time that meme would pop up and and again man this shitty iphone it's got preset things here like like memes already for you you know gifts sure so when you respond to people it's just like all right cool and it's just grumpy go, cat yeah up go there. to your fucking 1500 hundred dollar phone pop open what the first one is it's grumpy, grumpy cat. cat now you're dead if you if we're friends or you thought we were friends in this life and i sent you that that means i, I probably hated you oh. so go back through your messages and look if i sent you a grumpy cat i'm probably gift it. from my, my phone no no i would never send you that jesse we would never send been, you that we might have been fighting. i'd rather send you a coffin box with it with it open and say jump inside because that's that's what i I've, did get that from you yeah yesterday <laughs> that was cute jump inside because i wish you were fucking dead yep so where are my cat- socks? <laughs> where are my socks? You're fucking dead. <laughs> and that's just the kind of light banter that you and I <laughs> squabble. Is it squabble? Maybe. 
Grumpy cow. Oh, the internet so upset over grumpy cat. Before you get on the plane, you're gonna have to send me a grumpy cat. Oh boy. The next time I get mad at you, I'm gonna send you a grumpy cat. I mean So I'll expect one later today. <laughs> Gosh, starting a business. <laughs> Let's not go into overtime. Uh, we do have to go to Rev Fig. We do have to go to Rev Fig. I want to say this though before we get off the air. This is a breaking story. Uh, ICE is, is moving 225,000 illegals uh, across the country um, to South Florida. This is going to drop off 225,000 illegal immigrants in South Florida. Are they like sanctuary or they want to? What, why? Don't know. Don't know. But uh, if you're in Florida. if you're in the South Florida area, be, be Bolo next week. Bolo next week for um. the uh, the weather report is is gonna be uh, cloudy with a chance of meatballs out there. <laughs> so meatballs, they're not dropping Italians. I don't know, man. What that, like it's just a bunch of fucking elite. Like is that where we're at? We can't do anything about the border. We just drop off a quarter million illegals in a state and this see what happens. This is how I'm picturing it. Is like you know, like under the helicopter, like the big net. Yeah. And then they just like drop them. The pictures they have, they're just getting off of buses and like, hey, congratulations. Um, so he's dropping them in places that have asked for open borders and stuff, or I guess. I guess, man. This is. It's brilliant. This is uh, uh, this is gonna be a shit show. No, no. All these cities are getting overran. It's just gonna be an absolute shit show. Um, <laughs> let's get to the rev fig of the day. We're gonna go to Elton John on this one, by the way. Okay. Um, reason being, uh, the the Rocket Man, which we talked about on the last show, mm -hmm. actually premiered at Cannes last yeah. night. Standing ovation uh, for four minutes. Um, yes. Elton John was there. He was in the crowd sitting with the guy who played him. Love it. Uh, love it. The, love it. I, love I don't it. know. The Ter what's the, the, the actor's name? Taron Edgerton? Sure. Uh, we don't know his name yet. He's not, he's not really unknown. Nobody knows it yet. Yeah. Well, they will after this. Breaking news. Yeah. No, nobody even know. They didn't have him in the credits or anything. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they you don't have a computer. They haven't released his name yet, guys. So all Anyways, br breaking news, I'll get it to you next last time. Last night, they got up. And um, uh, he was holding that. his arm up. He started crying. Who was holding his arm up? Elton John was. Elton John was holding up uh, the actor's arm. Like this? Yeah. Kinda like you win? Like, okay, okay. You won. The guy, he started crying. It was four minutes. I, I don't, somebody had video of it inside the theater. And like, no lie, uh, even I got choked up. Because you could tell, not only did this guy bust his ass <sighs> to try to be Elton John right. for all of this time, but he's unknown. You're in can. I've been there. It that is a moment a dream. you dream of. Dream, dream, and like dream. you don't get it. No one ever gets it. I was there for a whole another reason, but uh, uh, I, had, I had like a midnight screening for for a movie. It was you know, like you know what I'm saying. It wasn't. This. You were holding your own arm up. I was holding my own, my own, <laughs> own arm up afterwards, right? Patting yourself, hey guys, yeah. It was a bunch um, of Germans sitting behind me, laughing at every racist oh, joke in the movie, which was awesome. But this, that's so this great. was the dream scene where you're like, oh man, because I've got I got to go see one of these big premieres like that there, and this was, um, this was it, man, and like. The can audience is rough. If they hate your movie, they're assholes over there. They will boo. They, they will walk out. They want to hate it. Yes. Is the idea. So they walk in wanting to your, hate these movies. Yeah. Yeah. The fact that this happens, people loved it and everybody loved it. And we're like, oh my God, this is great. Um, uh, and I read the reviews last night before we went on the show because I, I wanted to talk about this as the revolution figure of the day. The reviews all said the same thing of like, dude, this was what Bohemian Rhapsody wasn't. Like you believed that this guy was him and he was Sang rad and, songs, and you enjoyed busted it. Busted yeah. his ass, worked on it for years. Yeah. Like that's what we wanted. We wanted so, Sasha Baron Cohen. They were like, look, there is no lip syncing. There is no, you know, this, this kid sang whether or not he's, you know, uh, he got praised Elton actually John's for not doing an impression. Right. Elton John's voice, I will say, is not as prolific as... Ah. No, he's not... It's enough making them like a ball. Right, like so you, you can that, do it yeah. easily. I, I shudder to think what your... Um, My gay man stance would be? No, your Bohemian Rhapsody. What's I couldn't have played Freddie Mercury. Okay, 
So their voices in the in the world are a lot different. Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. will say, is it easier for someone to sing Elton John's songs than it is for someone to sing Freddie Mercury? Yes. But if someone had worked on it enough, yeah. if they had found an unknown, yes, yes. worked on it Correct. for years the way that this guy did, that's the way you're supposed to do it. Correct. And uh, anyway. I was amped to see it. Like I got choked up watching this video. It went viral. Um, if you get a chance to check it out, check it out. It's rad. Like just that, that is the, the dream of an actor moving to LA to do this whole shit. And it just, it's like winning the lottery. This, this kid won the lottery it's amazing. and it was an amazing moment. I, I, got, can't wait. I got, I got choked up seeing it. I so can't wait. It was rad. Uh, Jabe's fun show. I was heated today. It was hot today. Uh, for Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I am Ross Patterson. This is the revolution. It's enough. Make it Good night, everyone. Ooh.